Okay, this is some more movie reviews, and this is Silly Kelly. And, uh, yeah, we, we missed a couple. And I would like to review Adaptation. This is a Nicolas Cage movie with Meryl Streep in it. And in this one, we, were, we did a version of it before, a long time ago in the first season. And I thought it would be fun to do an update. Here is my... Okay, Adaptation. So we did this a couple of years ago, but uh, but it wasn't a very good review, and I'm going to do it better. So the premise of this particular movie was to adapt a book written by this lady author. Now, it's not a real story. It's just that the Orchid Thief is like a fictional story within it. But the guy did, uh, did um, being done Malkovich. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, Spike Jones, uh, actually. I think that that is that is the other guy, Terrence Malick. It was the Spike Jones. Spike Jones later went on to do her, and where the wild things are. So he's the uh, he's the Spike Jones guy, and Spike Jones usually does quirky dark comedies and dark dramas and things like that. And he decided to tackle the man who has writer's block while writing the Orchid Thief. And I remember seeing this movie and being so disgusted with it that I wanted to do a sketch in which my weirdo character from the audio tapes comes back with Creech, his buddy, Silly Kelly and Billy Allen, Silly Kelly Bullocks and Billy Allen Balls. They come back, because they're both names Balls. Balls 1 and 2 come back, and they're like, and they're like, you know, we're going to totally imitate the Orchid Thief, that movie, you know, with the, yeah, the adaptation, yeah, and we're going to smoke orchids. Because, yeah, because that'd be funny. Unfortunately, that joke was funny when the movie came out, but didn't funny anymore. It's just dumb. Uh, uh, the, the, I think the biggest problem with the, that movie was, really, was the critical acclaim and fawningness over this movie. Like, like they couldn't say anything bad about it. The critics were like, oh my god, this movie's amazing. And the guy playing the redneck is spellbinding. They said that. They said this actor is spellbinding. I said the only spell that guy's going to give anybody is a spell that puts him to sleep. That character was stupid. And that's the way he played him. How is, how is a druggy hick spellbinding? Okay, so he's never done that before, but that didn't make him spellbinding. It's like, no, that is a pretentious critic who wants to write about how awesome his word verbiage is. Bull. Yeah. Um, so there we go. He's not spellbinding. The premise is stupid. Basically, uh, our hero, Nicolas Cage, is apparently schizophrenic. And you think this would be Oscar bait. This movie would totally be an Oscar, you know, because he's schizophrenic. Uh, he's not playing it that way, though. He's playing like he has an actual twin brother who's there, who's his muse, who gives him all of his advice in his book while he's having writer's block. Do we actually want to see a movie where a guy has writer's block for two hours? No. But at least the movie didn't just tell and not show. At least it showed a little bit. At least it had the Meryl Streep character and the hit guy doing stuff as though he was writing their story as it went on. At least there were some visuals that were worthy. But the movie itself is a bore. It's boring. Ah, I'd rather watch Sideways than watch this thing again. It was just, wow, movie? Really? And, like, I get the idea. I get that it was supposed to be a, sort of a dark comedy, sort of a pretentious drama of the mind and existentialism and all that. But it was Boring. It's like boring on top of boring. It just kept going, and Mark's cards has not seen this movie. No surprise. <laughs> but yeah, adaptation. He's trying to adapt a screenplay. Now it seems to fly off the rails in the story, having reviewed it again. <laughs> having seen it fly off in the story, is that Nicolas Cage's character begins to lose his mind as he's got writer's block, which doesn't really happen when you have writer's block, but in his case it does. And, uh, and, um, he just decides, you know what, I'm going to end this movie stupid. The story that I'm adapting. Stupid. So I'm going to have the guy who's actually just collecting orchids, like, like, that's supposed to be original, and, like, it's clearly a nod to John Steinbeck and Odor of Chrysanthemums. 
you know, it's it's obvious like the the plant person knows all about plants and horticulture, putting that together and ooh, I'm so different. I'll just call it orchids instead of instead of chrysanthemums. It clearly is a riff of that. But but maybe not clearly though. I will take that back. Not clearly, it's sort of vague, whatever that's actually. But it sure seems a lot like a Steinbeck story. And uh, of course, uh, Steinbeck wouldn't have ended with drugs. Um, he uh, he had his own brand of stuff. Um, and uh, so, so basically, the hero lady and who's writing the story and the guy, the guy decided, oh yes, at the last minute, guess what? My orchids are actually like opium, and they're drugs. And the whole thing is just me cooking up drugs in my in my meth lab, opium lab thing. Yeah, that's the frickin' ending. And they get high. That's the ending. I get the idea, because I've seen other movies of Spike John since, and noted that he does stuff like that, like the ending of Where the Wild Things Are, or the ending of Her. And he throws, just throws in these weird curveball Hollywood, non-Hollywood slash Hollywood endings that, like, you know, like what's a twist? You know? And it's just like, okay, yeah, but your twist is stupid, because... For one thing, that they aren't drugs, and another thing, it would, if you actually smoked orchids like the movie, it would kill you. <laughs> yes, don't do that. Uh, but but yeah, it was bad movie, bad, one of the worst, and uh, yeah, so it's got to be included in the worst movies review. This is silly Kelly saying that the Orchid Thief slash adaptation is a bad movie from around 2003. Mm.